what is an injective function, sometimes just called an injection. That's what we'll be going over in today's Wrath of Math lesson. I'm pretty tired, so let's try to make this quick. Let's say we've got a function f that maps the set a to the set b. Then, here is our definition of an injective function. f is injective, also sometimes just called one-to-one, -one, if and only if, for all elements x, y, of the domain, f of x being equal to f of y implies that x equals y. Or equivalently, we could use the contrapositive for any two distinct elements of the domain, their images must also be distinct. f of x must not equal f of y. So the idea is that in an injective function, no element in the codomain gets mapped to more than once. It might get mapped to zero times, it might get mapped to once, but for a function to be injective, no element of the codomain can be mapped to more than once. So something like this would not be allowed in an injective function. And notice that there are three terms here that mean the same thing. An injective function is sometimes called an injection, which is sometimes called a one-to-one -one function. Another way to think of injective functions is that they preserve distinctness. I think this is a great way to think about it. If two elements of the domain are distinct, then their images, after getting put through the function, must also be distinct. That's what makes a function injective. Let's quickly take a more detailed look at a diagram to get a better idea of injections. Let's say this set is A, the domain, and this set B over here is the codomain. We'll put a few elements in our codomain, and we'll put a few elements in our domain. Again, for a function to be an injection, and we'll say that f is an injection, it's an injective function, distinct elements of the domain have to map to distinct elements of the codomain. And that's why injective functions are sometimes called one-to-one -one functions. One element of the domain maps to one element of the range, and every element in the range gets mapped to exactly once. Notice in this case that the range is this set of elements here. So not every element in the codomain is getting mapped to, and that's totally fine for an injective function but it's not fine for another type of function called a surjection, and we'll talk more about those in another lesson. Just to show you what a non-example would look like, if this element of the domain mapped to, say, this element of the codomain, this is no longer an injection, because we've got two distinct elements of the domain mapping to the same element of the codomain. So that would not be an injection. Now let's take a quick look at how we might prove a more concrete example of an injection. Let's say our function f maps the real numbers to the real numbers, and it's defined like this. f of x is equal to 2x. Then we'll take two elements, x, y, from the domain. Suppose that f of x is equal to f of y. Then, by definition of the function, 2x is equal to 2y. Divide both sides by 2, x is equal to y. Therefore, by definition, f is injective. So this is a super straightforward proof, just uses the definition we went over above. For any elements x, y of the domain, if f of x equals f of y implies that x equals y, then the function is injective. And in the example we just looked at, since this function f is differentiable on its entire domain, we could also prove that f is injective using calculus, because the derivative of f is equal to 2. If the derivative of a function is always positive or always negative, it can easily be shown that it is injective, using that contrapositive we talked about earlier, that x not equaling y implies that f of x is not equal to f of y. And if it's not clear to you how that would work, don't worry too much about it, but take some time to think about it. But most importantly, what I want you to get for this lesson is what an injective function is. And quickly, to make sure you understand, let's take a look at a more concrete non-example. Let's say we've got a function g that again maps the real numbers to the real numbers, and g is defined like this. g of x equals the absolute value of x. 
g is not an injective function. And we can prove this by counterexamples showing that the contrapositive doesn't hold. We take two distinct elements from the domain, negative 3 is not equal to positive 3, and then show that their images are equal. g of negative 3 is equal to the absolute value of negative 3 is equal to positive 3. g of positive 3 is equal to the absolute value of positive 3 is equal to positive 3. Therefore, g of negative 3 is equal to g of positive 3. Therefore, g is not injective. Pretty cool and pretty straightforward. Again, that was just using the contrapositive. We showed that the contrapositive doesn't hold. We found two distinct elements that had equal images. So since the contrapositive doesn't hold, the function cannot be injective. And that's where we'll leave it for today. So here is a practice problem to try on your own. F is a function that maps the reals to the reals. It's defined by f of x equals 3x squared. So is this function injective? Prove your answer, and let me know what you get down in the comments, and I'll leave the solution in the description. So I hope this video helped you understand what injective functions are. Let me know in the comments if you have any questions, need anything clarified, or have any other video requests. Thank you very much for watching, I'll see you next time, and be sure to subscribe for the swankiest math lessons on the internet. And a big thanks to Valo, who, upon my request, kindly gave me permission to use his music in my math lessons. Link to his music in the description.